Hey, my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? Hope you said great. Welcome back to the great state of Arkansas. Let's go explore it. Days with Jordan the Lion and the Joster begins now. John told me he went to explore Hot Springs, Arkansas, so that's where we're going. Well, looks like that water tower is saying we made it to Hot Springs. Interesting town. Maxwell Blade. So the first batch of stuff I want to show you is in Whittington Park. So what I wanted to come out and show you guys today is in the park is basically, well not basically, it is the birthplace of spring baseball. As we know spring training now, it all kind of came from one place and it all started here. Hot Springs reputation as a health and recreation resort attracting the rich and famous was certainly true in the late 1800s and well into the 20th century. The city had fine hotels, lively nightclubs, a beautiful mountain setting, and the famous hot water from the natural spring. In 1868, Cap Anson brought his Chicago White Stockings, now the Chicago Cubs, to the Hot Springs. This bustling turn of the century spa resort with its famous hot baths, mountains, trails, hotels, and activities was the perfect place for something no one had ever heard of. Spring training for professional baseball. Soon teams had built five fields and as many as 250 players, including the legends of the game, trained here year after year. Now it was the home of several teams over its time and then became the home of Negro League spring training as well. They have a listing of famous players it says that uh, all played here. These Hall of Fame inductees trained here and had a significant connection to the hot springs. I'm seeing Hank Aaron, Home Run Baker, Cool Papa Bell, Yogi Berra, Roy Campanella, Wow, those are some great old names. Eddie Collins, Babe Ruth, Dizzy Dean, Joe DiMaggio, Bobby Doerr, Buck Ewing, Bob Feller, Rube Foster, Jimmy Fox, Josh Gibson, Goose Gosselin, Hank Greenberg, Lefty Grove, Jesse Haynes from pretty close to where I'm from. Wow, what, what names, Walter Johnson, Ban Johnson, who they actually named the park here after, Carl Hubble, Miller Huggins, Monty Irvin, Rogers Hornsby, Bucky Harris, George Sisler, Tris Speaker, Casey Stangle. Wow. Now they have all kinds of historical markers around here I'm going to show you that tell the story of the history of baseball here. Now the Hot Springs is also known for this became where the baseball umpiring academy was. They mentioned a lot of players that played here, but they didn't really on here mention the different teams that made their home here. Starting with the Cleveland Spiders, the Chicago Cubs, St. Louis Cardinals, Pittsburgh Pirates, Detroit Tigers, New York Yankees, Brooklyn Dodgers, and Boston Red Sox. We're starting here at the Arkansas Alligator Farm and Petting Zoo. It was here back in like 1901, 1902. But we're gonna start over here and show you where the ball diamond was. So now we're not far in the parking lot of the Weyerheiser Center inside the park. And you'll notice there's a home plate right here. There's a plaque over there, but this plaque tells us the most. This is the Whittington Park plaque. Originally, this was Whittington Park. It says more baseball was played and the baseball on this corner than anywhere else in Hot Springs. Built in 1894 and used until 1942, Whittington Park, later named Ban Johnson Field, was the epicenter of baseball in Hot Springs. A partial list of those who 
played classic games here include Cy Young, Honus Wagner, Buck Freeman, Sam Crawford, Walter Johnson, Tris Speaker, and Babe Ruth. How cool. And we know exactly where home plate would have been because they have one here. And I'm gonna tell you something really cool. Piece of history happened right there. You see, there's a yellow awning back there. That is the alligator park and they have a plaque over there as well that tells of something very historic that happened right here that changed the course of Babe Ruth's history. But before we get to that, there's an acknowledgement of Mel Ott. The Hall of Fame outfielder tutored by John McGraw played his entire career with the New York Giants, hitting 511 home runs on his 30th birthday, March 2nd, 1939, in an intra squad game here at Whittington Park. Master Melvin belted three home runs over the right field fence. He played alongside Hall of Famer Bill Terry and Carl Hubble to lift the Hal Shoemaker team over the Carl Hubble team by a score of 10 to 6. I'm a lefty, so I have to stand here as though I'm going to bat. 1918, how cool is that? This is not where they first, when they first came to town and started doing the spring training, this is not where they played. I'll show you where that happened though. Here's the alligator farm and petting zoo. It's been here since 1902, so this would have been an attraction even when all the players were out here. But they have a plaque over here to Babe Ruth and it says, Babe Ruth trained here nine times and became a very familiar face around hot springs. He hiked the mountains, took the baths, played golf, patronized the casinos, and visited the racetrack. On March 17th, 1918, on St. Patrick's Day, he launched a mammoth home run from Whittington Park that landed on the fly inside the Arkansas alligator farm. <laughs> It has been measured at 573 feet, baseball's first 500 plus foot drive. Now what's really interesting about that is to take into consideration the park is here. He hit that from way back in that corner. But they say, you know, this at the time that he hit this in 1918, he was still a pitcher. So they said this was, seeing this is what made the Red Sox consider, hey, maybe he should be batting every day and not just the days that he's pitching. Since Babe Ruth was a pitcher, that day he was actually filling in at first base for the first time and he hit two home runs. His first home run was a long blast that ended here. And the second one was a grand slam. Now just next to the alligator farm and right across from Whittington Park was Fogel Field. This field, also known as Fordyce Field, was constructed in 1912 by the Hot Springs Park Company to meet demand of over 250 major leaguers training in the hot springs. Philadelphia Phillies owner Horace Fogel leased the field for his team, the Phillies. Roster included pitching legend Grover Cleveland Alexander and slugging outfielders Gavey Kraveth and Sherwood McGee. The training ground was later used by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Here they have a sign that points to Fogel Field being here. I think this is their excess of parking here. Oh yeah. So part of Fogel Field does still exist. It's just past the, or behind the alligator farm. So Fogel Field's right there. Whittington Park is right there. And then we have another sign right over here. Smokey Joe Wood, after training in Hot Springs in 1912, 22-year-old Smokey Joe Wood compiled a 34-5 record and led the Boston Red Sox to victory in the World Series. On March 28, 1913, Smokey Joe pitched five scoreless innings at Whittington Park versus the Pirates, twice striking out Honus Wagner. While in the Hot Springs, Wood rode an ostrich here at the Hot Springs Ostrich Farm. <laughs> Man, they had all kinds of fun around the ballpark, didn't they? Now here we have another historic sign says Sam Wahoo Crawford. On March 5th, 1911, here at Whittington Park, the man who remains the leader in triples, 
312 in Major League history played in an exhibition game between the Brooklyn Dodgers and a group of American League All-Stars. Wahoo blasted two doubles, one of his trademark triples, and a home run. In the same game, Walter Johnson pitched three scoreless innings and an 11-1 victory. Wow. And right next to it is the Hot Springs Showman's Association. So here in front of the Tiny Town Depot, they have a couple more signs. One for Lefty Grove says, from humble beginnings in Maryland's coal region, Lefty Grove became baseball's greatest left-handed pitcher. Using his blazing fastball and fiery temperament, he won 300 major league games and 108 international league games in both 1934 and 1938. Suffered a sore arm and came to the Valley the following year to regain his Hall of Fame form. He embodied the adage, hot springs where pitchers became legends. And the one next to him is Bill Dickey. Discovered while playing in Hot Springs, Arkansas, Bill Dickey joined the New York Yankees in 1928, batting 313 and slugging 202 home runs during his Hall of Fame career. He was best known for his rocket arm, fierce competitiveness, and cerebral handling of pitchers as one of baseball's greatest catchers. He won seven World Series as a player and six more as a coach with the Yanks. All right, we're gonna work our way out of the park now and head towards the downtown area. So we make our way into town. I found two of them along the way, one for Al Simmons. When illness threatened to end his Hall of Fame career prematurely in 1928, Al Simmons came to the hot springs to take the baths and hike the mountain trails. The visit worked wonders and encouraged by legendary athletics manager Connie Mack, Bucketfoot Al returned many times. On March 15, 1931, playing for the Minneapolis Millers against the Milwaukee Brewers, Simmons launched three home runs at Whittington Park. And then right next to him, Cardinals legend, Sam Musial. Legendary Hall of Fame slugger, Sam Musial often visited the Hot Springs to prepare for one of his 22 stellar seasons in the Major League Baseball. Stan would come with his St. Louis Cardinal teammates and owner August Bush to take the baths and enjoy the races at Oaklawn Park. Stan the man became one of the most respected and beloved figures in history of the game. I love that they've done this all over town, documented so many players that had a history here. Now this sign says the Majestic Hotel. Construction in 1902 and expanded in 1926, the Majestic was a favorite destination for Several major league teams, including the renowned Boston Red Sox. The Sox trained at Majestic Field on the south end of town. As part of their training, they hiked the four miles to and from the ball fields over West Mountain. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Welcome to the Garland County Courthouse. Let me tell you what used to be here. I actually told you when we were out at Whittington Field, it didn't start there and it didn't start at Fogel Field. It started where the courthouse is. Hot Springs Baseball Grounds, you are standing where the tradition of baseball spring training began. In 1886, baseball legends A.G. Spaulding and Cap Hansen brought the Chicago White Sockings, now the Cubs, to this field to train and play spring games. They were joined by fellow Hall of Famers, Mike King Kelly, John Clarkson, and future evangelist, Billy Sunday. On March 28, 1887, Cap Anson hit three home runs here. Cap Anson was a legend. He was a phenomenal baseball player and also a phenomenal manager for the Cubs. And their idea was to bring the players out here to preseason before the actual season started and it became the trend that we know it is today. So here we have a plaque to Honus Wagner. The man who is on the most expensive baseball card in history, is, as far as I know, that's still the case, million dollar card. Because the theory is that he never authorized his image to be used on a tobacco card, and so a lot of them got re-pulled or pulled from being made. And the other theory is that he was never paid or never given a contract, so he had them stop him. But his Legacy is huge here. It says no player left a bigger legacy in Hot Springs than the Flying Dutchman Honus Wagner. He enjoyed the baths and all the activities Hot Springs had to offer. He also participated in civic functions and coached the high school basketball team. <laughs> 
Honus played in dozens of classic baseball games at Whittington Park. On March 19, 1911, he recorded a single, triple, and home run, while his Hall of Fame manager, Fred Clark, hit two home runs. I love these historic plaques all over town. We have to put this one on. My grandpa has loved to tell me stories of Dizzy and Daffy Dean. J. M. Paul Dean, born in Arkansas, became the most famous brother duo in baseball history. As pitchers for the St. Louis Cardinals in 1934, they won a combined 49 games to lead the Cards to the victory of the World Series. 1932 to 1937. Colorful and outspoken Dizzy was the National League's greatest pitcher. Both often came to Hot Springs to coach at the town's nationally known baseball school. So I was walking down the street, looked down and happened to see this. It says, the Miss Arkansas pageant has been held in Hot Springs since 1958 and regarded as one of the top five state pageants. In 1964, Donna Axum became Arkansas's first Miss America. Her homecoming to Hot Springs included a parade down Central Avenue with Guy Lombardo as parade master. And this is Central Avenue where her parade happened. Here's a little taste of the Hot Springs here in town. I love the thermal baths. I got to do those in Budapest. It, it does do a wonder for your body. You feel so much better after. Now right here, this entire strip through town, we're all baths, hot spring baths, that people could come and partake in. Now they're all turned into shops. Here they actually have a plaque about it, the health benefits of taking the baths were a primary reason for baseball coming to hot springs. The players tended to drink heavily and believed the hot bath regimen could boil out the impurities in their system. The Buckstaff, still in use as a bathhouse, was built in 1912 and hosted many prominent players. The 1915 Fordyce bathhouse is now the National Park Visitor Center, including the gym where many players trained. So those are the Buckstaff baths right there, right across from us. Then right here at the Hot Springs Internal Medicine Clinic, we have a plaque for Tris Speaker, often regarded as Major League's greatest defensive outfielder. The Gray Eagle trained for many years in the Hot Springs as a player and as a manager. On March 18, 1912 at Whittington Park, Speaker hit a home run over the left field fence. He enjoyed every aspect of the city's culture and is still remembered for his iconic photograph riding a stuffed alligator. We went to his grave in Texas. So these are all the baths. Bath row. It's a lot of them. And then they end right up here. The Arlington Hotel, located across the street from Arlington Lawn, was the site of the infamous arrest of New York Giants manager John Muggsy McGraw. Apprehended by a U.S. Marshal for unlawful gambling when he was caught pitching silver dollars into a saloon basket, Muggsy was later released. The current Arlington, built in 1924, has hosted such notables as Babe Ruth, Lefty Grove, Hank Greenberg, Jimmy Fox, and Joe DiMaggio. So there's the Arlington Hotel. And they would have busted him on the Arlington lawn, I guess that would have been right over here. It's now the park, part of the National Spring Park. Yes, indeed, as I walked across the street, they identify this as the Arlington lawn. The Arlington Hotel was right there. It says that it's a 150 room wooden structure completed in 1875 and designed specifically to offer first class accommodations. The same that they might get in New York City or Chicago. 1893, it was replaced by a larger, more elaborate brick version. The Grand Hotel pictured here was of Moorish and Renaissance style and featured a glass-topped rotunda, large ballroom, and bridges leading to Hot Springs Mountain 
from several floors. Wow, that's really cool. It offered 300 guest rooms, 50 of which had private bathrooms. The second Arlington burned in 1923 and re was rebuilt across the street. In 1925, the iconic 500 room Arlington Hotel is still in use today. So this corner shot would have been this corner shot now. I like the way they rebuilt it, but I would have loved to have seen that glass rotunda and the bridges that took you to the mountain. That would have been very cool. And there's part of the hot springs over here. I want to take a look at and there's a park ranger over there giving a little tour. So if you look up there, you can see the steam as it's coming down the falls over here. And you can see the hot springs right here. Oh boy, you can really feel it too. I don't know if you're allowed to put your hands in or not, but I can feel the heat. All right, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I hope you enjoyed what we saw on Hot Springs today. There's so much to do here. There's the alligator farm, they've got a gangster museum, a gambling museum, a haunted tour, duck boat rides, all kinds of stuff. But I just, I love the idea of, you know, because I've been to spring training. Growing up, I'd always heard about spring training in Florida, never got to go. And then living in California when they started moving it all to Arizona, or moving a lot of it to Arizona, I started going. So getting to see where it all started was very cool for me. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Please hit the like button, please subscribe, and please ring the bell for notifications. We'll see you all next time. Have a great night from Hot Springs, Arkansas. Goodbye.